Now, welcome to um, Nature and uh, Scope of Economics. Uh, this uh, this topic talks about um, the nature, the, the the basis of economics. I mean, what's the basis of econ? What's the nature of economics? I mean, the scope of economics. Uh, under the scope of economics, we'll be examining uh, different um, uh, different concepts and definitions. And I hope uh, this will be an interesting, uh, interesting topic. And I, 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 I beseech you to, work, to to move along with me as we go on. Now, when we talk about nature and scope of economics, to have a good understanding of the basic and importance of economics, we need to consider the definition of economics as propounded by various scholars in the field. Now, for us to have a good knowledge of economics or what economics is all about, we need to what we need to talk about. The definition as propounded by different scholar in the field. I, I hope you know that if you're a professor in economics, you can make a working definition, you can give a working definition which will be binding. So with that, suffice to say that there are numerous definitions. It has not been particularly easy to give a strict and completely satisfactory de definition of economics. But at the same time, we have numerous definitions that was uh, that of economics that can give an insight into what economics is, and uh, th these definitions are what are broadly are categorized into four. Now, these four categories are one, the classical view; two, the neoclassical view; right? the third one is scarcity definition; why the fourth one is what is the working definition. I want us to listen attentively. These four categories of, of definition of economics. The one that will be laying emphasis on, or the one that is acceptable, or mostly acceptable, uh, mostly used, is that of the scarcity definition. So after explaining each of the, uh, of the four definitions of the four views or thoughts of economics, then we we'll lay more emphasis on what on the third one, which is the what, which is the scarcity, which is the scarcity definition. I mean, which is the scarcity definition. Now, let's start with the, t the first one, the classical view. Now, the classical economics were the earliest or first generation economics in the sense that they were the first to document the totality of their, of their economic thought in full scale. Now, this classical view are the ones that were the, they, they are the well, first generation of economics and they, 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 they are the ones that first to gather their thought, as in they are able to document or put in the words in the document their, well, their thought, their economic thought in full scale. So, that's why we'll call them the classical words, the classical view, uh, the classical uh, the classical, uh, the classical view. I mean, these are the people that what, that first what, gather their thoughts, their economic thoughts, and what, and document them. Now, some of the definition as propounded by this uh, first uh, school, first generation of economics, are what are to be explained below. The first one is that the first definition we need to consider here is um the first definition we need to consider here is what is that economics is what. Economics is an inquiry into the nature and cause of wealth of nations. As in any inquiry, economic is what? Economy is an inquiry into the nature and what and cause of the wealth of nations. Now as provided by Adam Smith. Now it means Adam Smith is one of the classical views, classical school of thought that what that provide one of the definitions which says that economics as a subject is a what is an inquiry into the nature and cause and causes of what? Of what? Of wealth of nation. It means when you inquire into the world nature and the cost of what of the wealth of a particular country or nations, then we we'll talk about what economy. So economy is all about, according to Adam Smith, inquiry into the wealth, into the nature and cost of wealth of nations of the country. Now of nations. Now the another school of thought, another 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 economy that what that that gave definition of what another the classical view is that is uh, that of uh, J B says. I mean J B says. They say that the what the study of laws which governs what I mean economics is what is said to be what the study of what of laws which governs what which governs wealth. So when you study the law of government, well, they will talk about economics according to JBC. Right? The third one that the third economics that made definition under what under this classical view is that of what is that of a uh, GS Mill, which says that who says that what economics is a body of knowledge which relates to what to wealth. So what we are now saying in essence is that. From this definition, we realize that most of these uh, classical view, classical economics, they what? They make definition in relation to the wealth of a nation. I mean, according to the G. Adam Smith, it says what? Economics is an inquiry into the nature and cause of wealth of nations. Why what? 
why the study, uh, why JBC says is the study of laws which governs wealth. I mean, that's according to JBC. Why economics is the body of knowledge which relates to wealth, according to what to J.S. Smith. So, it is all about wealth to the world, to the to this classical economics. Now, the second thought, the second school of thought, I mean, the second generation of economists are what I make up upon definitions of what of economics are the neoclassical view. This, the, the neoclassical economics were what? Were immediate successor of the classical economists who applied most of the approach and techniques in the latter with little modification in some cases. Now, it means this neo neoclassical view, the neo neoclassical school of thought of economics, they what? They make amendment or, or little modification about what about the, uh, on the what on the on the definition as presented provided by the what by their success that are, that, by their predecessors. I mean the classical view. So that's why we call them neoclassical neoclassical view. Now one of the definition of that is neoclassical view. I mean it was is that uh, is the one as in one provided by the Afer, by Afer Masha. Now he said that economics is the study of mankind in ordinary business of life. And now when you study mankind. It's the study of what? Of mankind in the ordinary business of what? In the ordinary business of life. Now, when you study mankind in the ordinary business of life, it examines that part of what? Of individual and social actions, which is most closely connected with the attainment and the use of what? Of material exercise of well, of well being. It means, economics, according to Afro Mashah, is the study of mankind in ordinary business of life. And when you study mankind in the ordinary business of life, it examines that, that part of individual and social actions. I mean, we we'll talk about the individual and the what and the social actions, social actions, which is most closely and connected. I mean, social actions which is most closely and connected with the attainment and with the use of material exercise of well-being. That is what one of the definitions that is neoclassical. View, who are the successor of what of the classical classical school of thought? Now the third word, the third school of thought of what economics are providing the uh, definition that I give definition of what of economics is that of the scarcity definition. Now this scarcity definition, this embraces the view of what of Lionel Robbins, you know, Lord Lionel Robbins. Now this is the this is the most uh, recognized uh, founder of what of definitions or the most recognized uh, professor that what I make what uh, that give working definition for what? For economics. And it's, and it's, I think his definition is mostly accepted as it was as in, uh, as a definition of economics. Now, in the present day. Now, this embraces the view of what of Lionel Robbins. Now, we are under this classic definition. And, the, and his numerous followers. According to this, according to this, now, according to this school of thought, the prime focus of economics is what? Is the problem of resources that are limited in the relation to what to human wants that are unlimited. Now, the focus of this um, of, the, of the of the definition as well by what Lionel Robbins, so that is scarcity definition or scarcity school of thought, is that economics is what economics economics is a school of thought. I mean, the prime focus of economics under this is that is the problem is school of is a school of thought. The prime focus of economics is the problem of resources that are limited. In, the, in relation to what to human wants that are what that are unlimited. So now the definition brings about the word the relationship is brings into focus the relationship between what between the limited resources, limited what resources and the what and the unlimited human wants. So what makes the definition of what of this cast definition to be unique is what is the focus of this definition on the what on the available resources in the nation and the what. And the and the what unlimited amount of what of human what human wants. Now, what is the relationship between the what between the resources in a country and the what and the unlimited wants of what of uh, of human beings residing in that country? That is the premise of what of the definition of what uh, as propounded by what by Adam uh, by uh, by La Lord Lionel Robbins on that is what scarcity definition. Now, the definition: economics is a science which studies human behavior. Economics is a science which studies what human what behavior, human behavior as a relationship between what ends and scarce means, which have alternative uh, uses. So this is what propounded by what definition propounded by what Lionel uh, Robbins. This is just saying that economics is a science which what which studies what human behavior. So what economics is what is based on is what is studies of behavior and whose behavior behavior of what. Behavior of human being, and what what is what is it about the behavior of human being? He studied behavior of human being as a relationship between what between the ends 
and what and the scarcity and the scarce means of what of that uh, of of that uh, human being. Now, what we are saying in essence is that the economy is a what is a study. We study human is a is a discipline. We study what human behavior as a relationship between what between the ends and what and the scarce means. So when we say ends, what do we mean? And simply means what we you what we want our what our want our needs our yearnings you know we have different yearnings different needs these are the ends and they are very unlimited why scarce means simply means the resources that we use in what in satisfying these are unlimited what unlimited ones now the the study of the behavior of the relationship between what between these ends and these scarce means which are what alternative uses mean these scarce means are what alternative uses so this definition is that definition that was that are provided by all Lord Lionel Robbins and it is what is definitely that is mostly acceptable and mostly used in the present day. Now Lord Robbins definition will for further explanation. Now the word ends refers to wants in terms of what goods and services required by man for survival. That is the end. Why why the word the means I mean the means refers to what productive resources otherwise known as factors of what of production. These are land labor capital which are used to produce goods and perform services which per which people desire to satisfy their wants. So, so to make a good clarification of what of the definition of what of scarcity definition as provided by what Lionel Robbins, we need to what take uh, give a, give an explanation to the what to the to the, to the terms in there. I mean, the first one which is the end, why the second which is what the scarce means. And I have talked about the ends to be our wants which are unlimited. Why our scarce means is our what is our resources which are what which are used in what satisfying that end. And mostly they are what they are the factors or production. So the relationship between these two terms as it relates to the behavior of human being is just what is what Lionel Robbins states as what as the definition of economics. Why the fourth view, which is the working definition according to Leo Kinsey remarks, economics are what are concerned with the behavior of people and the complexities of people's behaviors cannot be what easily captured in a single definition. So the working definition Lipsy shall Lipsy is one of the world propaganda or the world advocate of what of this uh, this working definition and there are other numerous what other numerous what the uh, uh, professors have actually make what their la landmark in what in this uh, in this working definition of what all economics so the fourth uh, school of thought or school of thought that was that, that gives definition of what of economics is that of the what the working Definition and um, the the prominent uh, advocate of this is that of uh, is, uh, is in person of Professor Richard Lipsy, and to Professor Richard Lipsy, the definition of what economics economics is defined as a social science concerned with the way the society should to employ scarce productive resources in order to what achieve certain condition of living. It means economics or Lipsy. It's also a what a science, but a social science. We study what the way society should to what employ their scarce productive resources. The way they employ their scarce productive resources in order to what to achieve what certain what condition of living. It means a a pry into the what into the way society should to employ its scarce productive resources in order to what to achieve certain condition of living. Instead of be what that will be the definition as presented by what by Richard Lipson. So we need to note. That the, uh, the most reckoned with de de definition is that of what Lionel Robbins definition, which is what we say that economics is science which studies what human behavior as a relationship between what ends and scarce means, which have alternative uh, alternative reason. Why is this so? Oh, why is this so? It's because of what because it contains the nitty gritty of what of what the the economy is all about. It's just studying about the behavior of human being. I mean, as relates to our what they are ends. Which is their numerous ones and what their scarce means, which is the what uh, limited resources used in satisfying that scarce means. So the relationship between the two, as it relates to the relationship of what of what uh, to the behavior of human being, is what is the premise of what of what economics is, as provided by what by Lionel Robbins. As we move on, we what we still talk more on what on this on the on on those concept on this concept on this definition of what Lionel. Lionel Robbins. Now let's go to another sub topic. Sub sub topic. Eh, yeah, which is what he says. What well, economics as a science. Now the question is, is economics a science? A science. A, is, 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 is it considered to be a science or not? Now economics is a science indeed. Why is it a science? Basically, 
Economics is science because fundamental objective is to ask, uh, because the fundamental objective, the fundamental objective of economics is to establish valid generalization. I mean, establishing of what, of valid generalization about the world, the principle underlying the world, the choice people make, I mean, the choice of people, with respect to the use of words of scarce resources. Economics explains the reason or the generalization about the words, that principle that was, that underlies words, underlies the choices that people make, as in what is their reason of making choices, in relation to the available resources that they are what, at their disposal. Now, any discipline that does this is what is what called economics, and it's what it's said, it's said to be a science. And because of what, because what science does is to what to establish a what an objective and uh, to establish a generalization about what about the principle underlying the what a particular phenomenon. Uh, science is all about making generalization or making hypothesis laws about what about a phenomenon or a what about a problem, and that is what economics also doing. But what economics now doing now is what. Using that science approach into what into studying the behavior of what of human beings. That is why we now say that economics is a science, but it's not a real or pure science. But it is a what? It is a what? It is a social science. However, economics is more referred to as a social science. Why? Because what it studies how people behave as distinct from study inanimate matter. If you notice that. We said that economy borders on the behavior of human beings, as in the rationale behind their choices they make and the what and the available resources at their disposal. So therefore, it cannot be categorized as a pure science like physics and chemistry, because physics and chemistry as a pure science borders on what both animate and inanimate, inanimate objects. But under the what under the economy, they borders mostly on what majorly on what on animates. That is why they are not physical. They are not pure science. Rather, they are what they are classified. As well as social science, because of what they study behavior and what behavior the behavior of what of human of human being. Now, from there, we now move on to what positive and normative economics. Now, what is positive economics and what is normative economics? These are the concepts that need clarification. And when we say positive economics, what we, what do we mean? Positive economics is concerned with what actually happened, what is happening, or what will happen. I mean, any part of economics or any economic concern, any economy issue that you are explaining. That what that borders on what actually happened or what will happen or what is happening. It's said to be a positive word economy. It is a value-free economy. You know, it is a value-free thing. You know, it is it is not biased. You know, it is objective. As in positive economies is our economies that what are objective. Yes, it is an objective word science. I mean the science is a word an issue when you when talk about positive economies, then there should be a fact to support those words. Those uh, issues you are raising at that point in time, it means they were they should be so they should be subjected to what verification and the words it means they are objective, they are not biased, they are value free. Now, in positive economics, problems are what are identified and predictions are made on the basis of observed facts. It means under the positive economies, what when you make prediction based on what's on observed facts, you don't just make predictions. There must be a reason, a basis, a yardstick, a data. You are, there must be data that you more than might be used to what to back your words to propositions or your predictions. That is what we call positive economics. Let's give an example of what of, uh, of positive economics. Now, the following statement illustrates positive economics. Let's, let's look at the first one. As we will say, there will be rise in the general price level. I mean, that's inflation, of course. Whenever the supply of money outstrips the supply of what of goods and services. Now. Generally, what happens when the supply of money in an economy is more than the supply of what of goods and services? If money in circulation is more than the supply of goods and services, then what do you expect? You expect the price of the goods and services to go up because there will be too much money to buy the available goods. Therefore, the people that are selling will be forced to want to increase or jack up the price of those goods. And if this increase in prices is what is sustained over some period, then over a long period, then we'll have a worse and inflation. So what this is saying is that as being a positive economy is saying that there will be rise in general price level. We were not just making a prediction that there will be a rise in general price level. There is a reason and that reason is very reliable. and that reason is that if supply of money is more than the goods and services, it means that it is an objective what? Objective economics because of what? Inflation can only occur when the money in circulation is more than the goods and services 
in circulation. That is a word, a positive economics because what it is value free, it is not judgmental, it is not biased because it's what is premised on what on fact. So and any any economics or any issues in economics are what are premised on what on fact, on verifiable facts, verifiable data. Then we we'll call that economics a word a positive economics. Let's look at another 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 instance of what a positive economics. A substantial fall in demand for the product of labor intensive industry will cause unemployment in the country. <laughs> Now what we are saying now is that there is going to be unemployment in the country. We are just making we are not just making the assumption that there will be an unemployment in the country. But we are saying that the, a substantial fall in demand for the product of labor intensive industry. It means if there is a fall in demand for a uh, for a product for a labor intensive industry, I mean an industry that was that overwhelmed by what by labor. I mean that an industry that the labor to capital ratio is high. I mean when they are used more of labor than what than capital in that industry. Then if the pro if the what demand for their products is what is low, then it simply it simply means that what that labor that they are making use of will be reduced because they have to shed off their what their labor. And if they shed off the labor, what happens? There will be what unemployment. It means that unemployment is what is inevitable. Whenever there is a substantial fall in the what in the demand for the product of labor intensive industry. Now this is what is also a positive economics because we are saying there will be unemployment. Why? Because of what? Because a substantial fall in demand for the product of labor intensive industry. Uh, if there is a substantial fall, substantial fall in demand for the products of labor intensive, then automatically we are going to have unemployment because there is no way a labor intensive industry will continue to run when there is a reduction in their demand. They will definitely want to cut costs. And how do they cut costs? They cut costs by what? By sending their worker away. That is what that is positive economy. So in a nutshell, positive economy is that economy that are what are premised on what on facts, that are value free, that are objective. So that's it means when you make an assumption on that positive economy, then you should what? You should be able to have reasons. You should be able to have facts. You should be able to have data that what that will be able to what substantiate that assumptions. Now on the other hand, when we're not talking about normative economy, I mean this is not narrative, I'm sorry, this is a normative this is a normative economics. When we talk about normative economy, normative economy deals with what is an is a direct opposite of what of positive economics. It deals with what ought to happen. You know, you, when we say positive, the other time we say we deal, it deals with what, what should what, what actually happened, or what is happening, or what what happen. But this normative economy deals with what, what ought to happen. I mean, what ought to happen, or what should happen. It is not value free. As a result, it's a subjective economy. It means a normative economy is what is not value free. It's a subjective economy. It's not. It's biased. Because it is not premised on what on fact. A normative economy is not premised on fact. It's a value. It's a, it's a value. It's not a value-free economy. Because any assumption made under this normative economy is what are what are not substantiated. So that is why we call it a normative economy, as opposed to what to positive economics. So let's consider the following statement, which belongs to the normative. Uh, belongs to the words normative. Economics. Let's consider an example of normative economics. Now, the first one is that curbing the rising prices of goods should be what should be the priority of the federal government of Nigeria. Now, now, what we are saying in essence here is that when we say curbing the rising prices of goods and such, rising prices of goods should be what the priority of the federal government of Nigeria. Now, now this is a subjective statement. Like a a civil servant can make this statement and say. Curbing the rising price, maybe the price of goods is what is increasing to him, and uh, he believes that that was the government is supposed to be doing. Now, why ordinarily an average Nigerian, other than average Nigerian, can say what what government is supposed to bother himself with is what is the provision of electricity? You know, is it, this is a two? This is a, this. Uh, we have two views here. These two views, they are, they are subjective. They are biased. You know, they have reasons why they are saying that. Uh, the first man might probably be seeing it in the sense that the amount he's collecting at the end of the day, a salary, is not able to, or he's not able to use this efficiently because the price of goods are increasing. That is why he says government should be concerned with self what with reduction in the world in the price of goods and services. Why the other man might probably be a barber? We won't actually want to what who is actually incurring more costs on what on what on petrol. Uh, on petrol, therefore he wants electricity. You know, these are two views, and these two views are what are subjective views, and these subjective views now bring us to the fore, to the focus that 
In normative economics, is that economics that is what that is subjective? It is a contrary, is contra, is 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 sharp contrast to that of what positive economics, which is always substantiated with what with fact. So, in normative economics, is that economics that what that what they are biased, that what they are subjective in nature. It means what they are what they are what they are not premised on what on facts. They are not premised on figures on data. So, therefore, in normative economics, that economics that are not what. They are not, um, they are biased, they are subjective, they are not objective in nature. Another one is that the federal government also concerns itself mostly with the solving problems of what, of unemployment. This can be a view of what, of a graduate that is unemployed. It means, who will say, government needs to concern itself with what, with the provision of unemployment. Why ordinarily government was, so probably supposed to be what, providing water for people, you know? These are the two views that was, you know, it depends on the needs of that person. That makes him to what to bring to bear that to make that assertions. It means he is biased. He has a what an inner view of what he wants to achieve before making an assertion of what government should be doing or not. So all these statements are what categorized under normative economics. So that so that is that for normative and positive economics. So let's go to the concept in economics. Now, now the concept in what you know in economics. So when we say economic concept in economics, these are what terms that we need to familiarize ourselves with under economics. So that we will have a good ground of what, grasp of what, of the what, of this, of this subject. Now, the first one is scarcity. When we say scarcity, scarcity is in the neutral meaning. Scarcity simply means non readily availability of something, you know. When an item on an issue is not readily available, then we say it is what is scarce. Now, the concept of scarcity is used to describe the situation that arises when, the situation that arises when limited resources are not enough to satisfy the unlimited human wants. We are talking about two things here. We are talking about resources. And we are talking about human wants. These are the two things that economy borders on, according to Lionel Robbins, you know, in his definition of a, of a scarcity definition. He is relating the behavior of human beings towards to resources available which are limited and the human wants which are what unlimited. Now, scarcity helps us to what? Is used to describe the situation that arises when the limited resources, I mean the factors of production, are not enough to handle the world or to cater for the woman resource, woman wants. Then, in, if this situation arises, when the resources are not enough to satisfy woman wants, they will say we are having a scarcity. So, what we are doing in economics mostly is what is scarcity. You know, we are trying to provide solution or pro solutions to the problem of scarcity. So, the premise or the focus of economics mostly is what is scarcity. That is why we say. The scarcity definition as propounded by Lionel Robbins is what is the most acceptable definition in the present. I mean. So therefore, scarcity explains the what the inadequacy of what of the available human resources to what to cater for the what for the numerous human woman ones. So that is scarcity. The next one is choice. When when something is scarce, then there is need for us to prioritize, you know. There is need for us to make choice. Because so far our resources is not enough to cater for our woman ones. Our wants. Our wants are many, while our resources are minimal. Then, we need to make choices among our wants, which our resources will satisfy, you know. Then, choice comes in. I mean, taking one and leaving the other. Now, since in any society, the available resources are not enough to produce all goods and services required for complete satisfaction of the numerous ones. Choices must now be made regarding what goods and services, how much to produce, for whom to produce. Therefore, an individual consumer must choose among type of goods and services and between what and between present and future consumptions because of his limited money income. Now what we are saying in essence is that because of the non readily availability of resources to satisfy human wants, then there is need to make a choice between what present and future consumption or between in the between items under consideration. So that what if you are doing that then we are making choices. So what brings about choice making is what is scarcity. Because we are having scarcity of what scarcity of resources in relation to limited to unlimited unlimited ones, then we need to make choice as to what as to be able to what to use our limited resources to satisfy our what, our unlimited ones. So that is what choice. Now the next one is scale of preference. Scale of preference is what is what is a uh, is uh, analogous to that of uh, of uh, scarcity. It's more or less like scarcity. Now when we say scale of preference, it, sim it simply means that what arrangement of our wants. According to what? According to the priority we, we place on them, you know. When you arrange your wants, you know, ordinarily we said our resources are not enough to satisfy our wants. For example, let's take a school. Let's take a what? An hypothetical example of what of students that what that have little resources on him or her. Maybe the resources having is what is fifty naira. 
And he's having like how many is actually he is to buy book, he's to buy uh a barrel, and he's to buy a shirt. And the shirt cost fifty naira, the barrel cost maybe ten naira, the book cost maybe five naira. So this what we are saying now is that he is having fifty naira on him and he can only he what he's having no matter this fifty naira now can be said to be what the resources. Now, why this book, bio, and shirt are the what? Are the numerals what want? Now, what kind of preference is now saying now is that we should now arrange this our want because of these limited resources that cannot be used to satisfy all our want. Then we should arrange our want based on the way it is what we want them. You know, to prioritize them. You know, the way they are what they are what they are necessary. They are what they are uh, the way you want to satisfy them. You know, the usefulness of them, the immediate, the, 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 how immediate, how tense are they to be satisfied, I mean, the immediate use of them. So, you need to arrange them. So, if you not arrange them the way, based on the way you want them satisfied, then we say we are constructing a scale of preference. Now, a, that student can say, you want to buy shirt first, that he prefers shirt because he's, maybe his clothes is torn, but after that, he would like to buy his book, and after that, you now buy his what? His, his Bible. So with this now, you have been able to rearrange this word, this one, because of what? These limited resources. This is now what we call the scale of what? Of preference. So a scale of preference is what? Explain the arrangement of one's one. You have arranged it. The one. According to their level of what? Of priority. You know, this is what will be number one on the priority. Number two, number three. So whenever I have money, you will first satisfy one, this one first, second and third. That's scale of preference. The next one is opportunity cost. Now, when we say opportunity cost, what do we mean? Opportunity cost it simply means the cost of what? Of alternative for gone, for us to be able to satisfy a particular need. Now, the cost of what? The, uh, the opportunity cost is the, what, the cost of alternative for gone, for the purpose of what? Of satisfying a particular what? For the purpose of satisfying a particular, a particular need. So, what are we saying now? What are we saying in essence? For that student, for that student, I will make a reference to the other time. Assuming the student is having two options on Saturday to do, maybe to go for lecture, to go for icon lecture, or CIS lecture, or whatever, or to what? To go to a cinema. Now, maybe these are the two items, that I, these are the two events he has on what? On, uh, on Wednesday, on uh, Saturday. Now, if he goes to what? To a lecture, then he will definitely not go to cinema. But if he goes to cinema, definitely lecture is not possible. Then, if eventually he decides to go to, decides to go to go for lecture, then we now say, what is the cost of this lecture? The cost of this lecture to economics is that to be the opportunity cost. And the opportunity cost is what? Is the cost of this cinema that he left unsatisfied because he wants to satisfy the lecture. So now the cost, opportunity cost is kind of the sacrifice made in making a choice. Now you have made a choice of going to work for lecture at the expense of what of the cinema. So the the, 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 the the cost of lecture is not the cost we incur to that lecture. Rather, it is what is the cinema that you are unable to go. Because it's what it is the what is the opportunity cost of the alternative the alternative that you forgone for the purpose of satisfying a particular choice. So this describes the sacrifice made in making a choice. It is also called what a real cost. So if you see a real cost, we say well, uh, is uh, Opportunity cost and the economy is more concerned about opportunity cost. They think in line with opportunity cost. They that is what makes them different from what for an, an, an accountant. We talk about cost as in cost incurred, and that's that. So now the next one is Ceteris Paribus. Ceteris Paribus simply means the term in economics called what simply means what all things being equal. Now when we say all things being equal, what do we mean? When we say all things being equal. We are saying that uh, what is the all things being equal? It means provided all other conditions affecting a particular variable remain constant, then the assumption we are making or asserting is what is correct. So let's talk about this. Assuming we are making a definition of what of uh, of demand, and we say demand, the higher the, the law of demand, that the higher the higher the price, the higher the price, the lower the what? The lower the quantity quantity demanded. I mean the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. Ceteris paribus. Ceteris paribus. So what it is saying is that 
the higher the price of a particular good, the lower the with the currency demanded. Now, the only way which this assumption that can be true is that what? Is that if all other conditions, all other factors affecting demand remain constant, like taste. So far they remain constant, then you can now say the higher the price, the higher the lower the quantity demanded. Now, that concept that we now make towards, that we now use towards to connote this word, this uh, constancy of what of what of variables in an assumption is what we call Ceteris Paribus. So Ceteris Paribus simply means what? Means all things being equal.